Bible? You gotta study the Bible. You'll get you you'll hear you'll hear prophecy, you'll hear preaching, and you'll get some things. But when you study this Bible over and over and over and over again, it gets in you. It's in you. And guess what the Holy Spirit does? The Holy Spirit brings his word back to our remembrance when we need it in a particular situation. So following the right leader means we got to follow God's word. We need to follow God's word. That's the right leader. Because when I follow God's word, I'm following God. for your presence in this place today. Oh, God, we offer you praise today, oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are, oh, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your many blessings, oh, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your unmerited favor. Hallelujah, oh, God. It is in you that we live, we move, and we have our being. Hallelujah, oh, God. Thank you for breathing our bodies today, Jesus. Oh, God, we magnify your name, oh, God. We adore you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship and praise your holy name. Hallelujah. For this is the day, hallelujah, that you have made. And regardless of the situation and the circumstances, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Glory to you today, God. Hallelujah, God, this is your time. Hallelujah. Do what you want to do. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord God. Thank you for fresh anointing. Hallelujah. Be poured out upon your people today. Thank you for yokes of bondage being destroyed. Thank you for burdens being removed. 
thank you for deliverance taking place. Thank you for salvation in this place today, oh God. Be glorified, oh God, and have your way. Hallelujah. Rule and super rule in this place today, God. Hallelujah. We want you, Jesus. We need you, God. We make room for you, God. Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Have your way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, Tabernacle of Praise Church International. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. And we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Hallelujah. Welcome to you that are joining us Facebook Live. We are going to go into our scripture for this morning. We're going to be reading Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans 8, starting at verse 18 and reading through verse 30. That's Romans 8. 18 through 30. I'll be reading from the NIV version. When you have it, say amen. Amen. And it reads, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Glory to God. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us, glory to God, through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship together with our praise team. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we give you all the glory. All the honor and all the praise. Lord God, we send worship your way because we love you. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together today and worship the Lord? You can sing with us. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands in the temple. The temple. And give God. And give God all the glory. All the glory. We have come to worship him. We have come to worship the name of the Lord. Oh, worship him. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands in the temple. And give God all the glory. And give God all the glory. We have come to worship him. Oh, worship him. Oh, worship him. Lift up your hands in the temple. And give God all the glory, honor, and honor. glory. We have come to worship him. Oh, worship him. Oh, worship him. Everybody lift up, lift your hands in the temple. And give God, and give God all the glory. All the glory. We have come to worship him. Oh, worship him. Oh, worship him. For his mercy and kindness endureth forever and ever and ever. Amen. And then so be it. Lift up your hands in the temple. Hallelujah. 
that give God all the, all the glory. Yes. We have come to worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Lift up your, Lift up your, your hands in, in the, temple. the temple. And give God all, and give the, God glory. Yes. all the glory. We have come to worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Oh, worship Him. For his mercy and kindness enduring forever and ever and ever. Amen. Come on and put your hands on it. There is no God like our God. Who is like the Lord? The answer is nobody. Who is like the Lord? Nobody. Who is like the Lord? Nobody. Come on and sing with us. Oh, he's great. He's great. He's great and greatly to be praised. God is great. He's great and greatly to be praised. God is great. He's great and greatly to be praised. God is great. He's great and greatly to be praised. God is great. He's great and greatly to be praised. Nobody like him. He's great. Nobody and greatly to be praised. Nobody like him. He's great. And greatly to be praised. He's great 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 and greatly to be praised. He's great. Yes, and greatly to be praised. We give your name glory He's today. Yes, and greatly to be praised. God is great. He's great. Oh, He's great. He's great. He's great. He's yes, great. God is great. He's great. Put your hands on it. He's great. God is great. He's great. God is great. He's great. God is great. He's great. Nobody likes. He's great. Nobody likes. He's great. Nobody likes. He's great. He's 
God Almighty, by yourself. I love you, Lord, today. I give you everything inside of me. My life is a worship unto you, Lord God. May it be a sweet smell in your nostril. Every song we sing, everything we say, let it magnify your greatness on today. We give it to you, Lord. (laughs) Oh, yes, yes. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough because I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough even if I try because you've been so good. Oh God, you've been so good. Oh, you've been so good to me. Let's sing together. Lord, you are good. Oh, yes, you are. You've been so good. Oh, yes, you have. Lord, you are good. Yes. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I owe you my life. I can't praise you. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good. So good to me. To me.
Good morning. I stand before you to pray for a pre people group in the 1040 window. The name of this people group is the Z Zarma people in the country of Nigeria. The population of the country 
is 5 million, approximately 124,000. The dominant religion in that country is Islam. Uh, the people in that group uh, are farmers. Most of them are farmers. They make their living by using very simple tools. They live in a dry land, very much desert. So growing things is very difficult for them, and they work very hard. They do farming. Some of them are businessmen, and some are teachers. In that country, they do not believe that the Bible is a reliable source. They accepted Islam by a group that came to their country many, many, many years ago. I know a missionary team that served there for a number of years. So as I come before you, I ask that you join me in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. According to your word, Father, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Father God, we pray in Jesus' name that you will raise up missionaries that will go even more to Nigeria and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, that you will reveal your truth through dreams. I pray, dear God, that you will strategically impact communities, impact people that are in strategic positions in villages, in small towns, in government. I pray in Jesus' name. I trust your Father that you are moving right now. Oh God, in that land, I pray in Jesus' name for the missionaries around that are raising up. I pray in Jesus' name for missionaries that speak French all around that region to penetrate that area with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray in Jesus' name that they will see how others live, how others trust you, and are drawn to you, Father God. I pray in Jesus' name that they will one day know your goodness, Lord God, in the land of the living. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name for their testimonies will be as ours, that you have healed us over and over again. I pray in Jesus' name for this confidence that when I die, I start living. Oh, God, I thank you, God, that as death works in this body, I thank you that life is working in me. I thank you, God, for life that's working in every believer, Lord God, with the boldness to share your gospel. I trust you and believe you, God, for the harvest of souls. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We bless the Lord. Amen. For this day and for this opportunity to come together and worship. Amen. Again, I want to Say welcome to all of you who are here today. Most of all, welcome Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
thank you for your presence in our midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we continue uh, in worship, amen, and continue, let's remember to continue to pray for these nations in the 1040 window. It is a part of our assignment as people who are concerned about accomplishing or being involved and engaged in the work of the Lord at home and abroad. Amen. Let's continue to pray for these nations. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. And the Lord is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please remember we have a brief uh, evangelism training following worship. Uh, we will stay in the 30-minute time frame as I, has, as I have uh, committed to. Amen. And you'll see how it works out. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. So please, ma'am and please, sir, after the benediction, please stay for those 30 minutes. We'll give you time to, to greet people uh, and do whatever else. And then the 15-minute time frame, then we will get started. Hallelujah. Amen. Please remember uh, that, I, that I leave Bishop Smith and I tomorrow, amen, for the mission to Kenya and Malawi. Please keep us in your prayers. Please, ma'am, and please, sir, we believe God, amen, for mighty, mighty outpouring of his spirit, amen, on this mission. And let's continue to lift up one another in prayer, amen. Uh, we will continue with our regular events as scheduled <coughs> Tuesday, Bible study, 7, prayer at 8. Wednesday night, we will have Bible study, amen, here at the sanctuary, amen, at 7, and youth Bible study at 6.30 on Wednesday via Zoom, and I'm sure these announcements are on the screen. Uh, Thursday, our young adult Bible study, amen. Next Sunday morning, we will be in Bungoma, Kenya, and then the next Sunday morning, first Sunday, we will be in Blantyre, Malawi, so keep us in your prayers. Saints, it's offering time. It's offering time. Amen, 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 amen. The Lord loves cheerful givers. And I don't know about you, but I'm always glad to give to the Lord. Amen. And for the work of the Lord, thank you so much, amen, for your faithfulness in giving. And we encourage those of you who are not tithers to to become tithers, uh, to bring the tithe and the offerings into the storehouse of the Lord. Amen? Uh, and remember, uh, you know, a tithe is, is, is always 10%. Uh, you can give more, and that's an offering, but if you give less, you've not given your tithe. Amen? Uh, and we believe that the, the tithe belongs to the Lord. And we give not out of compulsion, but we give because we love the Lord. Amen. As the praise team just finished singing, so many doors you open, so many ways you made, so many times you heal me. You've been so good to me. So as we prepare to give now, and if you're watching us online, the information is on the screen. If you're in the sanctuary and you want to give virtually, go to our website, topraise.us or .org, and the information for giving is there. If you need an envelope, raise your hands. The ushers will serve you. Let's prepare to give now. So, Father, thank you for this blessed privilege to sow into your work. Thank you, Father, for blessing us with sources of income that we're able to bring the tithe and the offerings into your storehouse today. And we thank you, Lord, that there is provision in your house to meet the needs that are required of us, are required of you in this house. We ask your blessings upon each giver now. And we thank you, Father, for the blessings that are associated with giving and tithing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. It's a new season, and 
And it's a new day, a fresh anointing is flowing my way. It's the season of power and prosperity. It's a new season, it's coming to me. Everybody's saying it's a new, it's a new season, and it's a new day, it's a new day, fresh anointing, it's flowing my way, it's flowing my way, it's a season of power, it's a season of power, and prosperity, and prosperity. It's a, it's a new season, and it's coming to me. Coming to me. Everybody sing it one more time. It's, it's a, a new, new season, and it's a new day. It's a new day. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. It's flowing my way. It's a season of power. It's a season of power. Prosperity, and prosperity. Oh, it's a new, it's a new season. 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 I declare it's a new season. I declare it's a new season. And it's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. Old things will be made new. It's a new season. 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 And it's coming to me. Coming to me. It's a season of power. And prosperity is it's a new season coming to me, coming to me. It's a season of power, it's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to me, coming to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. New season. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. of mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said he would not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth thee he will not slumber nor sleep, for the Lord is my keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand. No, the sun shall not smite thee. Nor the moon by night, he shall preserve thy soul, even forevermore. My help, my help, my help. Oh.
I will lift up mine eyes. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help. My help cometh from the Lord. The Lord who. The Lord which made heaven and earth. He said. He said. He would not suffer thy foot. Thy foot to be moved, the Lord, the Lord which keepeth thee, he shall, he shall not slumber nor sleep, for the Lord is for the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shed upon, upon thy right hand. Upon
coming from the Lord. All of my help, all of my help, coming from the Lord. Lord. All of my help, the Lord, the this night. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All of my help. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. The Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Whew, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. The Lord knows what we need. And he knows it. And the present tense. And even the future tense, because he sees what we don't see. And knows what we don't know. All of my help comes from the Lord. As I was preparing the message for today, that scripture didn't come to mind until I was on my way uh, to worship this morning. Lift up, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. But the Lord laid it on my heart this morning just to encourage a number of people, pastors and ministers of the gospel. And I sent a scripture out this morning even to, to our ministers here and, and others. And 
that scripture will come out in the message, so I won't say it right now. But it's all tied to our help coming from the Lord. And many times, when we're encouraging others, the same words that we use to encourage others encourage us. That's why it's so important to be encouragers and share the word of the Lord because every time you do, that word is going to minister to you. Today, I want to um, go to Romans chapter 8 from the scripture that was read in your hearing, which was Romans 18 through 30. I'm only going to read verse 18. And you go back and, and read all of that. I consider that our, our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And, and I'm, I'm going to talk about facing challenges of daily living while remaining faithful to God. Facing challenges of daily living while remaining faithful to God. Father, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for your word and the power of your word. Thank you, God, for your help, your strength. Thank you for this preaching moment. I pray for a fresh anointing of your spirit so that I could minister under your anointing. I pray that you'll anoint all of us so that we will hear and receive. For we know that it is your anointing that destroys the yoke and your anointing that removes the burden. Thank you, Lord. Have your way. Be glorified. Thank you that your word is not going to return to you void. It's going to accomplish what you desire. Thank you for prospering your word in the things that you sent your word to. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Life is challenging. Is it not? Life is challenging. It varies from person to person, and it varies from age group to age group, from economic level to economic level. It varies from ethnicity to ethnicity, but life is challenging. Amen? Challenges, challenges come with the territory of being alive and living in this world. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You all hear me good out there? All right, because the sound changed a little bit up here for some, for some reason. Uh, you know, and as I was, as I was preparing this message, um, I realize that I don't have to give you any examples of challenges of life. <laughs> because if you are alive, you're facing a challenge. Right Amen. Somebody said it right now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And the thing about it is that you will continue facing challenges as long as you live. Amen. As long as you Live. Now that doesn't sound very encouraging, but it's real. Amen. Amen. So you can be 19 and you're facing challenges. When you get to be 69, you're going to be facing challenges. If you live to be 99, guess what? You're going to be facing challenges. You're going to be facing challenges. Sometimes I'm watching. The, I'm good. I'm, sometimes I'm watching these commercials on television, and you know they're talking about you know retiring and you know going on vacation and doing all of these travel, this traveling and what have you. 
you know, and I realized that, you know, these are just commercials. And it would be wonderful if, if, if life just turned out like that, where all you had to do was retire and get your check and go live on the beach. Wouldn't it be nice? I was talking to Pastor Garcia the other day, and I said, you know, I told my wife, we're gonna, when we retire, we're going to buy some property in Dominican Republic, and we're going to build a house and move down to DR. Stay six months there and six months in the United States. And then I was sitting down thinking last night, that's in the ocean. It's in the Caribbean. And when storms come, <laughs> are you hearing me? All right. <laughs> yeah, so, so challenges are going to come. You can't run from challenges. Not that I'll be moving to DR to run from challenges. I'll be moving to DR. Y'all can come visit us sometime. You know? <laughs> but challenges are real. They're very real in everyone's life. Amen. At all points in life, challenges are real. For some, they're worse than others. However, they're very real. And, and, you know, when you think about the realness of challenges and you think about ministry, it's important for us to remember that as, as we go through life, and especially as we're called upon to minister to other people, uh, the challenges are real, and we have to be sensitive to what people are going through in their lives. It's always easy to say, oh, you can do better than that. But you're not walking in that person's shoes. Amen. They, maybe they could, but at this point in their life, they may be going through a challenge. And until you're walking in their shoes, be very careful how you respond to people. That's a, that's a better way to say it anyway. Amen? And that's what we have to learn. We have to learn the better way to say it. Amen? Even when you're dealing with your own children and your own spouses, there's a better way to say it. Can somebody say that again? There's a better way. Amen, 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 amen. Now, now, as followers of Jesus, as followers of Christ, we still have challenges. Yeah? When Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulation, he was speaking of challenges. Yeah? In the sense of great trouble uh, that's going to come in our lives. He was, not, he was not being covert in calling us and telling us life is going to be good all of the time. He did say, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. But he also said, in the world, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Amen. Amen. When Jesus said, you're in the world, but not of the world, a part of that speaks to the challenges of living in this world as people of God who are surrounded by or who will encounter many other people who don't have the same perspective that we have about God and serving God. Yeah. yeah. When Jesus said the thief comes, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy, he was speaking to the fact that there, that there, is, there is one who creates the challenges, the troubles, the warfare that we're going to experience in this life. So we're going to have challenges. How we face our challenges makes all the difference in the world. So in our challenges as, as, as children of God, uh, we are still required to remain faithful to God. Amen. We don't get a, we don't get a pass. I'm going through so I can treat you any kind of way. I'm having a hard day so I can say whatever's on my mind. Well, I have to be careful what's on my mind when I'm having a hard day. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, and, and being faithful to God, being faithful to God involves being faithful to his work, amen, which is, uh, which includes ministering, ministering uh, to people, it includes being faithful to the household of faith, being faithful to kingdom living, Amen? Being faithful to serving. Being faithful to God just, just, just doesn't simply mean I stay at home and read my Bible. Amen? Because that's not what you see Jesus doing when you look at his life story. You don't see him just always up in the mountain praying. 
Amen? Matter of fact, when he was up on the mountain of transfiguration and Peter and John were just amazed by what took place up there, they said, let's build a tabernacle. You know, let's, let's stay up. You know, you're going to build a tabernacle. You're going to stay. Jesus said there are needs in the valley. And as saints of God, we have to always remember that there are needs that we are called to minister to. So, so, so being faithful to God, being faithful to God includes being faithful to his, to his work. And <laughs> that's just, that just adds another layer to the challenges of life, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does. Because in the natural, sometimes you want to slap that person. I see some heads. <laughs> it adds another layer to the challenges of life and, and being real, amen. We have to we understand that, you know, that that hey. This is a challenge for me. That may, some days may be better than others. Some days you don't want to hold your peace. Some days you don't want to bite your tongue, but you got to bite your tongue. Amen. You got to choose the right words to say at the right time. I was talking with, with, with one of my pastor brothers uh, just yesterday, and he was sharing something with me uh, <clears throat> about a response that his son wanted to give to a client, and he says, son, you, you can't say that, you know. You, you got to look, that, the picture is bigger than this. They might be wrong, but, but, but you need food on your table. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And in their situation, and the kind of work that they were doing, uh, there are some things that he wasn't paying attention to. You know, sometimes people... People will offend you on your job, but you have to think about this. If you quit your job because you were offended, you got a light bill due at the end of the month. You got a car payment due. You, you, you got a house payment or apartment payment due. So sometimes you have to learn to, as the old people would say, hold your peace. Am I telling the truth, anybody? You just don't just walk off of a job and say, oh, I'm going to make it. But what you going to do until you make it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we don't think. It's not just young people. Some old people don't have, don't walk in wisdom. All of the older people don't walk in wisdom all of the time. All of the time. We have to learn. We have to learn. So, so, so what must we do? What must we do? Um, in the scripture, we find words of instruction. We find words of wisdom. We find, we find help in our present challenges. But guess what? We've got to investigate the scriptures. Amen. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If all of the scriptures you get, you get on Sunday morning when you come to worship, then you are anemic. <laughs> you are experiencing spiritual, scriptural anemia, and you're weak. Amen. Because this is only, you also have preached an hour, an hour <laughs> of time out of, how many hours are there in the week? 60-something hours a week, I believe it is, yeah. David says in Psalm 103, verses 13 and 14, yeah, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Now, that's wonderful. It's wonderful to know that our heavenly father knows us. And knows about us and knows what we're going through and knows the challenges that we face in our lives. Amen. And it's here to help us. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15, verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one, but 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 have one who has been tempted just in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. 
What a wonderful thing to know about our Father. That in our challenges, he already knows what it is for us to go through what we go through. He empathizes with us. He remembers our frame. He knows that we're made of dust. Yeah, yeah. So when you think about the challenges that you go through, it's important to know that you go to the Word. Yeah. The, the, I just, the, the song just came to mind. I can go to God in prayer. Yeah, you can go to God in prayer, but you better go to the Word too. You need some Word. You need, the Word is the sword of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. The Word is quick and powerful, sharper than a double-edged sword. You get the word, amen, so that when you finish praying, you know what to say. Or in the midst of praying, you know what to say. Or before praying, you know what to say. God, you said in your word, amen. God, I stand on your word, amen. You get, you, you, you can, you, we should go to God in prayer, amen, and we can approach the throne of grace, amen, with boldness so that we can find, obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. But along with prayer, we need the word. Amen. So our text has something to say to us today. Amen. Has something to say to us today about facing the challenges of daily living. Pay attention to the wording. Facing the challenges of daily living while we remain faithful to God. Because it's the faithful to God part that we gotta, we gotta get down, many of us. Amen. It says. Can you read it with me? Is anybody looking at it? Uh, verse, verse 18. Can anybody, can, can y'all just open your mouth loud and read it together? Even if you're reading from, I'm reading NIV, you may be reading a different translation. Uh, let's go. I consider that our present sufferings Amen. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. I want y'all to look at that again because it, it says something. Uh, and you caught it. Hopefully you did. I consider that what? I consider that what? I consider that what? Our present sufferings, before we go any further, our present sufferings. How does he describe sufferings? What before present? Our present suffering. Now, you know, I know what Paul is talking about. He's talking, he's writing to the church at Rome. But he's writing in present tense. So when I read it, I'm just not hearing him speak to the people in Rome over a thousand years ago. I hear him speaking to me right now. My present suffering. What I'm going through, the challenges that I am facing in the here and in the now. You know, the Word of God is active and alive. The Word of God is spirit, and the Word of God is life. And so, and I, many of us know this, when you're reading the Scripture, it has to become rhema to you. You have to hear the Lord speaking to you in your present situation. Amen. Amen. One scripture I shared with the pastor this morning, he wrote back, he said, he said, Dad, thank you so much for sharing, for being obedient to the Lord, for the Lord knew I needed this this morning. Present. Amen. What you're going through right now. Is anybody going through anything? I think I heard somebody say earlier, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got up at 5 o'clock this morning. I love my sleep. <laughs> so guess what I'm feeling right now? Right now, my body is saying, you missed two hours of sleep this morning. Present. Amen. You say, well, that's not suffering, whether well, for you it may not be suffering, but if you like to go to sleep, <laughs> amen, it could be worse. Praise the name of Jesus. But my present suffering, my present suffering, God is concerned 
about the challenges that you're facing in your daily life. And, and we, have to, we, we have to learn to be faithful to God in the midst of what we're going through. So, so there are three things I'm going to share with you. Amen. And I'm going to be quick. Amen. Number one, keep things in the proper spiritual perspective. Keep things in the proper spiritual perspective. You see, as, as this pastor shared with his son, amen, <laughs> there is more to what you're seeing. And I'll say it like this. There is more to this life than what we see with the natural eye. Paul went on to say, I consider that, this, that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the, crea for the creation is waiting in, in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Well, you know, I may not talk so much about all of this, but I want us to hear this, that, that you see certain things with your natural eye. And if you're not careful, you will focus in on what you're going through right now. But there is a glory to be revealed. That, that there is more to what God is doing in your life than what you see right now. We're headed for more and for greater than what we're experiencing right now. More and greater is not just for heaven, amen, amen, but it will, ult and it will ultimately consummate in heaven for Jesus has prepared a place for us, amen, that where he is there we can be also, but right now, in the here and in the now, in your present life, before you leave this world, there is something that God wants to do and will do in your life. So don't settle in on your suffering and say, that's it. There's a glory that, 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 that's to be revealed. Now remember this. You're in a race. To get to victory, you got to run the race. You're in a football game. To win the game, your team has to play the game. You're in college. To graduate, you got to pass the test. Does that make any sense? You want to you, you, you get to the glory, but you got to go through what it takes to get to the glory. So what you're going through right now is not the end of it all. There's more to this than what you see. You got to remember that. You got to remember that in life, in ministry, there's more to this than what we see. Amen. Amen. That's more to this than what we see. In, in your marriage, in the beginning, uh, uh, things can be, just be wonderful, and, and especially on the day of the marriage, you, you got, you know, you just blown away. Amen. But then you start going through trials and tribulations. And you may only see the trials and the tribulations that you're going through, but if you can hold on, if you can hold out, there is a glory that is to be revealed that you don't see. There are some things in this process. The sovereign God is in charge and has put certain processes in place that must be worked out. That's the reason that in the fullness of time, Christ came into the world. Amen? The fullness of time had to take place. We don't see things that God sees them. But we can trust that the fullness of time will come for us in our sufferings when the glory of God will be revealed in us. I can only tell you that you got to go through it. You got to go through it. I got to go through it. Everybody's got to go through it. Whatever it is, whatever you're experiencing in your life, you just got to go through it. Because in the midst of every storm, afterwards, the sun will, it will, it will, it will. I was talking to somebody the other day, and he, he was telling me they were going to the beach, and 
It just rained, rained, rained. It was really, people were stopping a long way. He said, he said, Bishop, I just kept going, kept going slow, because I knew that eventually I was going to come out on the other side. Sometimes you have to slow your road, just slow down a little bit, you know, but you got to keep pressing, pressing your way. Yeah, yeah, because there's a glory. And we want the glory, but sometimes we want it really fast. God, God, uh, I'm, 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 God, when? God, how long? God, I'm tired. Well, God says, stop murmuring and complaining and trust me that my glory will be revealed. And then in this process, in this process, amen, you're not doing this alone. You've you got to help her. You've got to help her. Amen. As a follower of Jesus Christ, you have a helper. Amen. Don't ever think that you're making it through the challenges of life in your own strength, your own wisdom, your own resources. You are not. You have a helper. I, I like that song that says, as I look back over my life, and think things over. I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got, why do I have a testimony? I had a helper. I didn't make it this far alone. Let me tell you something. If it had not been for the grace of God, amen, in my life, I wouldn't be standing here today. Amen? And in his grace is his helper. Holy Spirit is here to help me. Jesus told his disciples, amen, uh, I will not leave you helpless. I will send the helper. Paul says here, the Holy Spirit, amen, he helps us in our weaknesses. Amen. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We don't know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Oh, my goodness. You say, I can go to God in prayer. You will face a situation that you might say, God, you might say, I don't know what to say. But guess what? you got a helper who goes to the Lord on your behalf. Amen. You don't even know what he's saying. Amen. But he, 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 he you, you don't even know that he's saying anything. But Paul says, hmm, wordless groans. Can I, the, the King James says, Moans and groans that cannot be uttered. Amen. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. You know, I don't know if what the old people said was true or not, but they said that when you moan, the devil don't know what you're talking about. Now, now I don't know if I've read that in the Bible. Anybody read that in the Bible? You tell me. Yeah, I've never read that. But, but there's something about when you don't know what to say and, 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 and just in your spirit, man, mmm. All you can do is there's a, there's, a, there's a moan on the inside of you. There's a groan on the inside of you. But you don't know what to say. You don't know how to deal with it. Amen. I thought about, I thought about, mm, I thought about someone that I know uh, dearly who, who, who um, on his deathbed, he wasn't come grumbling and complaining. His daughter said, that on his deathbed, he was just saying, thank you, Jesus. 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 It's something about your helper. Amen. Even in your last hours or your last moment, amen, when your faith is in God, amen. Listen, in, in these times, it doesn't matter what people say about you. Mm -mm. You've got to know that, that you have a helper who is with you. Amen. And guess what? You know, you know and, I, and I read this, and I read this, and, uh, and Paul went on to say, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. I thank God. Thank God for your Holy Spirit because when you intercede for me, you're interceding for me in accordance to the will of God. When I pray, I may be praying according to my will. I may be praying according to what I want. I may be praying according to the results that I want to see. But Holy Ghost, when you pray for me, you intercede for me in accordance to the will of God. Anybody catch that? 
I heard a song a long time ago when I was in seminary in Atlanta. I never forgot it. I don't know all of the words to it. The lady was singing. She said, the safest place, and you've heard me say this before, the safest place in the entire world is in the will of God. It's in the will of God. Amen. And so when the Holy Spirit is praying for us, he's praying for us according to the will of God. Amen. Amen. You can't say that you're always praying according to the will of God. But when he prays, he's praying according to the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. We need the will of God to be done. We need the will of God to be done. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus prayed, he did say, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But then he said, nevertheless, not as I will, but your will be done. Amen? So what the Holy Spirit is doing for us when he's praying for us, according to the will of God, is that he's helping keep us on track. Because we'll get off track. We will. We will. Have you ever been going somewhere? And you got you didn't accident. Well, now we got GPS. But sometimes you don't want to trust the GPS. Anybody ever not want to trust the GPS? Let me tell you now. I was following the GPS one time going to a grave site. It took me to a dead end. So sometimes I don't want to follow GPS. But I was going somewhere before I had a GPS. And I was coming back, and I said, it looks like I should take this road. I was trying to get back to the interstate. And I drove and drove and drove, and when I got to a point where the interstate was above me, the bridge. So I was going, where? In the wrong direction. It was getting dark. And I was a long way from home. I quickly turned around and went back to my starting point. Sometimes in life, we're headed places, and it looks like we should be going in that direction. But we have a helper to help keep us on track, and if we listen to him, we will go in the right direction. Yeah. We need it. God's will prevails. I was in Belk the other day. I don't normally go to Belk, but I went to pick up something. And the guy that was helping me was, was, a, was a preacher. And he said, what you preach? This was Friday, Thursday, Friday. He said, what you preaching about Sunday? I said, well, I, I'm not sure yet, but, but uh, we're dealing with evangelism. And then he said, he said, as he turned around and talked, he said, Proverbs 19 and 21. He said, that'll preach the three Ps. Well, I'm not, I started working on that, but that was what the Lord told me to preach. I left those notes on the table at home. But when I thought about this and the Holy Spirit praying according to the will of God, Proverbs 19 and 21 says, many are the plans of a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purposes. Are the Lord's purpose, yeah, that prevail. It's the Lord's purpose that prevails. So we got all of these plans and all of these ideas. Y'all listening? And we're always like that. We're planning to do this. We're planning to do, to do that. We want to do this. We want to go here. We want to go there. Next year, we've already made out our calendar. And we, we know what work is, but we planned for this week to be vacation. This week, but we're making all of these plans, but our plans are not guaranteed to prevail. But it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Amen. Whatever God's purpose is for your life, if you get in God's purpose, that purpose will prevail. Let me tell you how soul winning works when we engage in it because it's the Lord's purpose. It's the Lord's purpose. If we do what the Lord has purposed for us to do, it works. Amen. It works. It's work. It works. Whatever God's purpose is, it's going to work. That's the guarantee of Scripture. So the Holy Spirit is interceding according to the will of God because he knows God's purposes prevail. 
Didn't they prevail in Jesus? They prevail. From Genesis to Revelation, we see God's purposes fail. We see the scarlet thread of salvation from Genesis all the way to Revelation. We see it culminated in Christ coming into this world to be the sacrifice for our sin. Amen. And we see him shedding his blood to, to satisfy the divine wrath of God so that people can be saved. His atoning sacrifice. But then we go on to Revelation to see the culmination of what God has done and will do for his creation in Jesus. His purposes prevail. His purposes fail. So then what should we do? As we deal with, as we deal with, with the subject of facing the challenges of daily living while remaining faithful to God. Now we can rest in God. Now that I know, now that I know that I've got a, that, 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 that life goes beyond what I see with the natural eye. And I don't, I don't walk according to sight. I've got to walk by faith. Amen. And walking by faith, ah, it can be testy sometimes, but you got to stay in that vein and you got to walk by faith because without faith, nobody can please God. And I want to please God. So I got to, I got to do this thing by faith and I've got to trust him. I got to know that, that there's a glory that's going to be revealed, amen, in this process as I walk by faith, amen. And I have this helper. I have the Holy Spirit who is my helper. God's purposes prevail, so now I, I can rest. I can rest in God, knowing that in all things, in all things, in how many things? In how many things? In your sickness. In the death of a loved one. In the loss of a job. In all things. In the attacks of the enemy. Oh, his purpose is God doesn't work in the midst of the attack of the enemy. In all things, in all things, God works for what? For good or for the good of those who love him and who are the call, who have been called according to his purpose. Have you been called? Have you been called? According to his purposes. And his purposes do what? Let me tell you something. There are, some, there are some trying things that happen in your life. There are some bad things that can happen in your life. You can even do bad things in your life, but God will work in the midst of that because his purposes prevail. He has a, I'm not giving anybody a license to sin, but I want us to get this. His purpose is going to prevail. It may take you 10 years to come back around to God's purposes, but when you come back around to God's purposes, you see them prevailing. You see them prevailing. So the Bible says, don't be anxious about anything. So you're facing challenges of life, but you're anxious. No, the scripture says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, with prayer and thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Amen. And God will move. God will hear. God will answer your prayer. Amen. God will, the God of thanksgiving will, will I, I may be misquoting that last part of that. <laughs> Uh, but the scripture I was focusing on that I wanted to focus on is what Jesus said, don't be anxious about life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you put on. Amen? Consider the lilies of the field. They don't work like you do. Now, I'm not telling you don't work. You need to work. Man, don't work, don't eat. But he just said, consider how beautiful they are. God takes care of them. Consider the flowers of the air. God takes care of them. You are more valuable to God than they are. He'll do the same thing for you. So in this process of facing, facing the challenges of, of daily life, allow the peace of God, the peace of God that passes all understanding to keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Because God is in control. God is, God is in control. We know. Do you know? I know. That in all things, God works together 
for the good of those who have been called according to his purposes. For those that God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What shall we say then? If God be for us, oh my goodness, who can be against us? I like to say it like this. If God is for me, it doesn't matter who's against me. Amen. It doesn't matter because God has all power in his hands. He is a sovereign God. Amen. He does what he wants to do. There's no power greater than the power of our God. There's no one greater than him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So what do we do? Facing the challenges of daily living while remaining faithful to God. Remember, this life is bigger than what you see with the natural eye. There's more to this life than this. What you're going through right now, you're not going to be going through it always. There's, there's something God is doing in the midst. You have a helper, amen, and God is at work in the midst of your situation to bring about good because you love him and you are the called according to his purpose. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power of your word. I thank you, Lord, that when your word goes forth, it does not return to you void, but it accomplishes all that you desire. I thank you, Father, that you prosper your word in the things that you sent your word to. Lord, you know the challenges that we face in daily living. We thank you, God, for speaking to us this morning. Help us to keep our focus on you and to see things from a spiritual perspective, knowing that this life is greater than what we see with our natural eye. Teach us to live by faith and not by sight so that we, as we engage in your work, will have the right perspective, that we won't give up, and we will trust you to help us in every situation, in every circumstance, knowing, dear God, that you are at work in our midst for the good, in the midst of all of this, because we love you, and we are the call according to your purposes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. God, we give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. There may be someone today, hallelujah, who doesn't know this Christ that we're talking about. He loves you. You see, God loved you even before you were saved, before you were born again. It's because of his love that all of us are drawn to the Lord. God has a will and a purpose for all of our lives. If you're watching me online this morning, if anybody in the sanctuary is not saved, it's important that we understand this. Yes, even saved people have challenges. The difference in us is that we have a different perspective, and we have a helper that's going to help us through. But you can have the same helper. The Lord is no respecter of persons. The Lord loves you. God has a will for your life. The same Holy Spirit who intercedes for us will intercede for you. There's so much more to this life than what you're going through, than what you're experiencing, than what you're seeing with your natural eye. God has a purpose for your life that you will never discover until you yield your life to him. So today, if you want to give your life to Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity to give your life to Jesus. I want to pray for you right now. We talk about 
Jesus dying on the cross. And the reason that's so important is because God's justice requires to be satisfied. If you break the law and you're taken to court, the judge will pass sentence on you. And something has that you're either going to pay a fine or you're going to serve time in jail because justice has to be satisfied. Well, God's righteous law has been broken. We broke it. There's nothing we can do to fix that. But God fixed it for us out of his great love for us. He said, Jesus, to die on the cross for your sins, for my sins, to satisfy divine justice so that God's wrath will be turned away from us. The Bible says the soul, that, the, soul the person that sins shall surely die. But Jesus took your place, my place, when he died on that cross. He died on our behalf to satisfy the righteous requirement of the law so that we could be saved. He did that for you. If you're not saved today, he still did it for you. And he's waiting on you to, to, to accept the provision that he's made for you. This is your opportunity. If you want to be saved, if you want to be in the will of God, I want to give you this, I want to lead you in this prayer of confession right now. Maybe you don't know what to say. If you know what to say, just pray yourself. Ask the Lord to forgive you of your sin. Thank him for the sacrificial death of Christ and ask Jesus to come into your heart to be your Savior and be your Lord. But I want to lead you in this prayer now if you want salvation. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I can't save myself. But Lord, I believe that you died on the cross in my place to satisfy God's righteous requirement of his law so that I could be saved. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for doing that for me. Lord Jesus, I accept your sacrifice. I accept you. Come into my heart, into my life. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. I yield my life to you today. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. The prayer of faith, which that is, amen, because salvation is not by feeling, it is by faith. Because you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ by faith in your heart. You may not feel any different, but let me tell you, if that was the decision of your will, something has taken place in you. The Spirit of the Lord has heard your cry. He has come to live in you. He's created a new birth. He's created a new person in you. Now, as he lives in you, you can begin to grow in him. As he grows in you and you learn of him and he teaches you his will in his way, you'll be a part of his will. You are saved. Well, let me make it clear. You're saved right now, but it's this growth process. So what, what we need you to do, what we want you to do is write to us and let us know of the decision that you made to accept Jesus as your Savior and your Lord so that we can follow up with you. We can help lead you to that place uh, uh, where you're growing, where you're developing your relationship with the Lord, where you can mature in the Lord. We want you to be connected to a local church in your vicinity. Uh, for, so just give us your information so that we can follow up with you if you look at the website, uh, if you're looking at the page right now, that information is posted there. When you go to our website and you fill out the form, 
uh, so that uh, we can get back in contact with you. Don't just say, okay, I accept Jesus. I'm saved. I don't need anything else. No, you don't need to be out here alone. You don't need to be out here alone. No baby is born, lives, and thrives if that baby is left on a doorstep and nobody takes that baby in and nurtures that baby and helps that baby grow. So write to us. Let us know of the decision that you've made to follow Jesus. And we will follow up with you. You're facing challenges in your life that you're not going to be able to face alone. You're not going to be able to face them alone. There'll be times you'll look to your family and friends. They can help you through some things. But there are some things you'll face. You need the Lord in your life. There are going to be times when you're going to be all alone in the physical sense. But you can, in those times, you will never be alone in the spiritual sense. So if you've made a decision to follow Jesus, You've made the right decision. Please, ma'am, please, sir, write to us and let us know of the decision that you've made. Amen? I want to pray for us today. You're facing challenges in your daily life. Yes. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you that when your word goes forth, it will not return to you void. It accomplishes all that you desire. And you prosper your word in the things you've sent your word to. So thank you, Father, for sending your word to us today. I pray for each individual that's under the sound of my voice, each situation that each of us face in our lives, Thank you, Father, for the help that you give us. Thank you that we're not facing these things alone. Thank you that as we lift up our eyes to the hills, you are our help. And your help you give to us. Meet every need today. Whatever that sickness is, I come against it in the name of Jesus. By your stripes, we were healed. Whatever that issue is, I present it to you like the woman with the issue of blood. Twelve long years when she touched the hem of your garment, her faith made her whole. God, in the name of Jesus, whatever that problem is, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your healing grace, your healing virtue. Thank you for your delivering power. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your patience, Lord God. Thank you for your long-suffering, Lord, with us. Thank you, God. As you minister grace to each one of our hearts today, each one of our situations, Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for healing. Thank you for strength. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for power. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for health. Thank you for wholeness. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I pray that, that you have been helped by the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. Consider, consider uh, Continue to pray. Uh, for us as we go out on the mission field. Amen. These next two weeks. Amen. Uh, thank God for his grace and his mercy. Thank God for going before us. I don't know what challenges that we're going to face. There will be challenges, but I know where the victory lies. Amen. And my hope is in the Lord. And I know that this is the Lord's purposes. And I've seen the Lord prevail. I know his purposes prevail. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all come. Amen. As we do. And I appreciate, I appreciate your prayers. Our ministers 
We're going to pray for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We just want to take this opportunity. We'll ask all the ministers to come. And the deacons back there. We want to take this opportunity to lift up Bishop. Uh, we thank God for the awesome work that he is doing. And we thank God for the willing heart that Bishop has to go. And uh, as we uh, here, we're praying, then we are actually um, in the work with him. Okay? We don't have to go physically, but as long as we lift him up, we, we're, we're in the work with him. We're going to ask Mr. Uh, Simon, if you will, to lead us in prayer. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah for Bishop and First Lady Jackson. Thank you, oh God, for these, your vessels that you have anointed for your kingdom work for such a time as this. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, as Bishop Jackson and Bishop Smith, hallelujah, goes to fulfill, Lord God, the assignment that you have placed upon them, Father. We thank you that you go before them. We thank you in the name of Jesus that you would make every crooked path straight. We thank you in the name of Jesus that you would cover them under your precious blood, that you would keep their bodies healthy and whole. We thank you, Lord God, for the field that is ripe for harvest in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that nothing will stand against the assignment that you have given them. Father God, thank you that you've given your angels charge over them as they go. Thank you, Lord God, that whatever mode of transportation they take, Lord God, hallelujah, you will be with them. In the name of Jesus, Satan, the Lord rebuke you and your tactics and your plan. And we thank you that every plan of the enemy falls dead to the ground against their lives, Lord God, against, Lord God, what you plan to do. Thank you for yokes of bondage that will be destroyed on the mission field. Thank you for souls that will be saved on the mission field. Thank you for lives that will be transformed and demons, demons that will flee in the name of Jesus. We thank you for Lady Jackson, Lord God. Thank you for how she stands beside Bishop and supports him, Lord God, and covers him in prayer. Now, God, we're asking that you cover her, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Meet every need in her life, oh God. Touch her body from the crown of her head to the very soles of her feet, Father God. Thank you for the assignment that you have on her life. In this time, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we cover yes to toe under your precious blood in the name of Jesus. And oh God, as we are here carrying on the work and the assignment for Tabernacle of Praise, we thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do here. Thank you for the growth in ministry here. Thank you for the souls that are going to be saved here, oh God. We want you to be glorified. This is your work, Lord God. Not as we will, but as you will. Thank you, Lord God, that every dollar, every cent, every resource is provided. Be with the pastors in Kenya, the pastors and leaders in Malawi, Lord God. Use them for your glory, oh God. Hallelujah. Be, you be glorified. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks and believe. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You gonna say? Bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank God for our ministers and our elders. Amen. And as Minister Simon was praying and I was standing at the altar, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Amen. God's purposes prevail. Amen. Last night I was just thinking about how this ministry was founded and how the warfare we've experienced even being in York, South Carolina. But God's purposes prevail. His purposes prevail. Amen. So guess what, Tabernacle of Praise? We're prevailing. Amen. And, and we will see the day. Amen. That the testimonies that we give when we come back from the mission field, amen, of the souls being won and saved, we're going to see those very same testimonies right here in York, South Carolina. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Souls saved, souls won. Amen. For the kingdom of God. Keep us in prayer. God bless you. Amen. Uh, so I know you all weren't expecting this, but it's only 1045. So we've got 15 minutes. Amen. Then we will start our training. Praise the Lord. You, you know what I meant by what you all weren't expecting for me to finish preaching so early. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. Let's stand. Lord, thank you for this time in your presence. Thank you for your anointing. Amen. We pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that you will be with us. You promise never to leave us nor to forsake us. We commit ourselves to you under your anointing, under your covering, that you will be with us always, protect us and keep us and guide us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray until we meet again. Amen. God bless you.